Hey everybody, welcome to my first tutorial. This tutorial is on Blender and we'll talk about uh, displacement maps in Blender. Uh, in this particular tutorial we will talk about making displacement maps in ZBrush and getting them into Blender and having them work right. So I'll get right to the meat of this so you guys don't have to look at my face for too long. So a quick shout out to Peter Tan for suggesting this tutorial on my Grave Goblin video. Thanks, Peter. All right, so a quick, quick introduction to displacement maps. Displacement maps are grayscale images that are applied to 3D models, and those dictate how much a vertex should be moved in a certain direction, uh, usually along the surface normal, either in a positive or negative direction. And at least in this tutorial, that's what we're going to be talking about. Uh, they're different from bump maps and normal maps as they actually physically displace geometry. So that's sort of the background of those. All right. We can demonstrate how a displacement map works by applying one on a flat plane. Uh, we can use, let's see, if we go into displace. And we can select a new texture, go to the texture panel. Make sure it's on displace. Open your texture. I have mine under gradients. And nothing's happening. Obviously, the reason nothing is happening is because the plane is made up of four vertices at these corners. If you go into edit mode, you'll see there's no other vertices. So all that's happening is it's displacing those four vertices downwards. It's not what we want. So what we can do is we can subdivide the plane. We'll add a subsurface and put that at the top. And now you'll see that the displacement map is subdividing it more like it should. You might expect. And so if we let me pull up the uh, the circular. There we go. There's the gradient. You can see how the black areas correspond to this area on the plane, and it has displaced them negatively on the z axis, while the white displaces it on the on the positive z axis. So it's negative one, positive one, which coincides with the all white or all black. The mid level on the displacement modifier tells Blender which what value is at zero. So right now the mid level is 0.5. So a gray value, if you have between zero and one, a gray value of 0.5 lies directly on the zero axis of the zero point of the z axis so we can we can swap we can change that we can put that up so now things in the one range the highest range lay on the zero point or we can put it down now everything that is zero lies on the zero point of the z axis all right so that's basic displacement so how do we get that to happen out of ZBrush and apply it to a model in Blender? In ZBrush, once we have modeled our, or once we have sculpted our character or whatever we're making, there's, there's two ways to do this, but um, the, the Z plugin, I can't seem to get to work, the uh, multi-map exporter which gives you the option to uh, export a displacement. But um, I keep getting a mostly black image with very little white. And I haven't really looked into it because uh, this works just fine. So when I export, number one, you have to lower your subdivision levels all the way to zero because it will grab the displacement map from your highest subdivision. Um, and export that. I'm not really sure why ZBrush makes you do that, but it does. Um, 
I turn off uh, smooth UVs. I find that that tends to give me some problems within Blender. So I turn that off uh, and I turn on flip vertical. And then I create and export the map. It's got to flip this image vertically uh, because Blender and ZBrush, when you, when you export an OBJ from ZBrush, the UV is coming upside down. So when you flip it, your image will be correct inside of Blender. So once you create your displacement map, you can pull it into Blender. This is the object file directly out of ZBrush. And it's just, just a, not, it's not a very dense mesh. But so, so to apply our displacement modifier, we will add a subdivision surface first. I'm going to turn off my simplify. Add a subdivision surface. This will subdivide the mesh so that there's more geometry for the displacement map to work on. So add your displacement map. It's going to look really weird at first. It's because it's simply, it's really the applying a displacement of nothing. Um, you want to load up a texture. So you want to say new, new, go to your displacement texture under your texture panel. And you want to open, find your displacement map. There's mine. This is exported directly out of ZBrush. And it looks awful. That's because we need to change our local coordinates to UV. And you need to drop this strength to 0.1. At least this is what I find to be the best, most accurate. All right, and once you have that, you'll notice it still doesn't look quite right. You need to go back to the texture panel and you need to change the color space from sRGB to non-color. And that will give you much more accurate displacement. And then you can adjust the number of subdivisions per your view or per your render, whatever you want to have. So you can work, work on your animation or whatever you're doing with a low subdivision level and when you render out you can set it very high and have it really detailed or apply a normal map or a bump map and uh, I'll get into those in another tutorial. This is the first one and uh, I hope you liked it. If you did please subscribe, please like and uh, hopefully I'll, <laughs> I'll get better at doing these and we'll make some more. All right, thanks.